Welcome to Crypto Base Scanner. So, you want to start trading cryptocurrencies but don't know where to begin? In this video, we'll give you a quick introduction of what you need to know so you can start that journey. Here we go. Coins are traded between buyers and sellers. To buy or sell coins, you have to use an exchange. An exchange is a company you send money or coins to that they will keep in your name and use to fill your orders. The exchanges, Bidrex, HitBTC, and Binance, to name a few, also allow you to trade with other traders. A key thing to remember is that you cannot just buy coins whenever you want. You have to wait for someone that has coins they want to sell. This person is a seller. This works both ways. So if you're a seller, you have to wait for someone who wants to buy to come along. And this person is a buyer. In order to let traders know you want to buy or sell, you place an order on the exchange. Once your order is placed, simply wait for a buyer or seller to trade with you. The price of the coin is determined by supply and demand. You've probably heard this term a lot. So basically, if there are a lot of people that want to sell, the price will go down. And if a lot of people want to buy, the price will go up. We'll use this Bitcoin market as an example to bring everything to life. You can see the current supply and demand in the order book. The order book is made up of buy and sell orders. The sell orders table shows the amount of coins available for a specific price. So if you want to buy coin quickly, most traders would aim to pay the lowest price that is listed on the sell order table. If there are no coins available at the price you want to pay, a bid is placed on the buy orders table. Let's say you want to buy two coins and you're willing to pay between 9,120 and 9,130 per coin. So you bid 9,120 per coin, but only one coin is available to buy at 9,120. You can buy the one coin available immediately because there's a sell order for that price and wait for more to be available at 9,120. The exchange will put the remainder on the buy orders table. But there's another way you can buy your coins as well. That is to place a limit order. This type of order means that you're willing to buy your two coins for a maximum price. The exchange will make sure you first buy the coins on the cheapest order, 9,120, and it works its way up the sell orders until your price limit is reached. You can see how easy it is in this example here. The trader simply chooses the market, limit, or stop limit tab and enters the desired prices for their trade. It's almost too easy. The buy orders table is basically the opposite of the sell orders table, and it displays the amount of coins traders want and what they are willing to pay. If you already own coins that you don't want anymore and want to sell quickly, you can use this table to see at what price you would be able to sell your coins and how many you can sell. Again, if you want to sell more than people are willing to buy for your price or at a different price than buyers are bidding, your sell order will be placed on the sell orders book. An important point is that all the orders which take place are displayed in the trades table, which shows orders that have been filled and shows how many coins were traded and for what price. But fear not, you won't have to read thousands of individual trades because this information is condensed in the candlestick chart, a common chart used to display the trades and it's called this because it's made of bars that look like candles. Exchanges use this chart to give you a quick indication of the prices traded in a specific time frame. Each bar represents a time frame. In this chart, one bar equals one hour of trading. Also, each bar is made up of four different prices, and they are the opening price, which is the market price of the coin at the beginning of the hour, the highest price, the highest traded price in that hour, the lowest price, the lowest traded price in that hour, and lastly, the closing price, which is the market price of the coin at the end of the hour. The small lines on each bar are called the wicks, or lower shadow and upper shadow. The box is called the body. Candles also have different colors. Red, meaning that the market price at the end of the hour is lower than it was at the beginning of the hour, and green, which means the price at the end of the hour is higher than the beginning of the hour. Together, the candles in the chart form a flowing line. The chart will often slowly go up and down in waves. 
The waves form a trend. The trend can be upwards, downwards, or it can even move sideways. Each trend has terms associated with it that you will often hear. Upwards trends are called bullish. Downwards trends are called bearish. Sideways trends are called consolidating. These trends together also form a wave and will fluctuate between the trends. The lengths of the trends can also vary a lot. Now we'll turn our attention to the volume. No, your music's not too loud. Most candlestick charts also have a market trading volume indicator. This volume represents the amount of coins traded on the market in the time frame, usually 24 hours. Basically, higher volume markets are a bit more stable and have a better chance of your order being filled completely. Lower volume markets can be more volatile and have a risk of only partially filling your order. Now let's look at the bottom of the chart. You'll see the trading volume illustrated. Each bar is an indication of the volume in respect to the candles. Taller bars indicate a larger volume of trades or a large order. Shorter bars indicate fewer trades or small orders. Large movements in price are usually paired with high volume. If you see a big downwards movement in price with a lot of volume, it can indicate a panic sell. If you see a big upwards movement with a lot of volume, it can mean a sudden interest in the coin. That concludes our quick introduction to trading cryptocurrencies. What's next? Now that we've learned a bit about trading, we can move on to the next video, where we'll explain a common trading strategy to determine if a market has a good trading opportunity or not.